Hello, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here today to talk to you about my transformative space. Transformation is an interesting word because of the way it makes us feel about change and our journey through life. Personal transformation is often a combination of quick and slow change over time. And as a result, in order for us to really understand it, we have to take and look at the transformations that have happened in our life over a long time period. Over the past 10 years, I've slowly been becoming the person that I want to be by looking at all of the small and big transformations that have happened over my entire life. My journey starts on the island of Guam. Humanity just celebrated a big moment in human space flight. How many of you remember or watched the Apollo 11 moon landing? <laughs> I was born on Guam because my father worked at the NASA tracking station there. And I was born eight and a half months after Neil Armstrong took those first steps on the moon. And as a result, I like to think of myself as a celebration baby. I actually grew up with Neil Armstrong's autograph, along with all kinds of other NASA memorabilia, on the walls of my house. And it really had an impact on the way I looked at space and aviation as a kid. I was all into the military and aviation and aerospace. I was in the Civil Air Patrol, and I wanted to fly the F-16 and then transition into the astronaut program and become the shuttle commander. Just about every kid wanted to do that because it was the 80s and Top Gun was all the rage and of course we had the space shuttle at that time. But a couple of transformations happened in my life when I was a teenager that really changed uh, my perspective and where I was going in life. The first thing was that I got glasses. And back in those days, you couldn't be a military aviator if you didn't have 20-20 vision. And the other thing that happened was that my father, who had always been my support and champion, got cancer and passed away. As a result of those two things happening, I no longer had direction in life and wasn't sure where I was going. My father's biggest goal for me and my siblings was for us to get the college degree that had eluded both him and my mom. Science and math had always come easy for me, so I went off to school and I got degrees in both uh, environmental science and geology. I actually spent a lot of time and money becoming Dr. Proctor. And the thing about my education is it opened up doors and led to connections I never would have imagined as a kid. For example, I got my dream job as a direct result of my education. I am a geoscience professor at South Mountain Community College, and I just finished my 20th year teaching there. And as a geoscientist, I have been able to travel and teach around the world, and I even got my pilot's license. But in all of that time, I, the astronaut program never even entered my mind again. Didn't even think about it until one day, in my late 30s, I got an email from a friend who said, NASA's looking for astronauts, you should apply. At first I thought, this is a joke, right? They must be kidding. But my curiosity and the possibility of getting this elusive childhood dream of becoming an astronaut was just too strong for me to ignore. But before I could chase this idea, I needed to go and think about what it means to be a community college professor and the stigma associated with that. And what I'm talking about is this voice inside our head that fuels us with self-doubt and shackles our ability to put ourselves out there and to be vulnerable. 
I had to come to terms. I had to actually look back at my career and see all the transitions that had happened, all those transformations that made me into who I am, and to realize that not only was I qualified, but that I could do this job. I just needed to have the courage to apply. And so I eventually did, and out of thousands of people, I ended up being a finalist for the NASA astronaut program in 2009. And what that means is that it came down to a yes-no phone call, and that yes-no phone call came from astronaut Sunita Williams, and it was a no, and even though it was a no phone call, I had been fundamentally transformed as a result of this experience. I was no longer the person I was before I applied for the program. I was reconciling my childhood dream and embracing my love of space in ways I never could have imagined before I got that email from my friend. To some extent, I had been chasing space my entire life. Space is another really interesting word, even more so than transformation, because space can mean so many different things. When you hear the word space, how does that resonate with you? What type of space really connects with you? Is it personal space? Or, if you think about outdoor space? Or maybe creative space? Or how about emotional space? There are so many different types of space. Naturally, when I heard the word space, the one that resonated with me is outer space. After going through the NASA astronaut selection process, I've actually transitioned into becoming an analog astronaut, and that's why I'm dressed like this before you today. An analog astronaut is a person who engages in human spaceflight training and research, but here on Earth. So what that means is that I've actually lived in moon and Mars simulations around the world. For example, I've lived in this 900 square foot dome on the Big Island of Hawaii in a Mars simulation for, with five other individuals for four months. Raise your hand if you think that's not a lot of space for six individuals over four months. For a long time, space to me was thinking about outer space. And it wasn't until I lived in this Mars simulation that I started to think about space differently. This is the crew that I lived in that simulation with. NASA is really interested in human spaceflight exploration, and one of the key research areas is crew cohesion. How do you get a group of people, put them together in a very tight, confined space for a long duration and have them not want to kill each other. This intrigued me. Not the part about killing each other, but the idea of space and how space is really important to us. What our space looks like and the type of space we need. So I started to change my focus from this outer space to space on Earth. Because I figured if we can determine how to live and survive and thrive in this harsh environment we call outer space, then maybe we can learn to live and thrive and survive on this beautiful starship we call Earth. And this got me thinking about what type of space can really make a difference in people's lives. Is there a transformative space that will make a difference for everybody here on Earth. And so this got me thinking about, well, if that transformative space exists, then how, what is it and how can I harness that space and use that space effectively? And what I came to conclude is that the most transformative space, for me, my transformative space is right here, one arm's length. To me, this is the most amazing transformative space there is because it's all about me and the things that I do every day in this space. For me, I had mentioned that 
I'd been going through a transformation. And what I realized is that my goal in life is to inspire. I want to use my transformative space to inspire a single person every single day. That's my superpower, harnessing my transformative space to make a difference in the people around me, the people who are within my grasp. That's what I want to do. We all have the power, you have the power, to transform the world around you. And if you think about using your transformational space to strive for equality, to be inclusive, to think about diversity, and to reach across to those who are least like you and make connections, think about the impact we will have on our world within our own transformational space. We have the power, you have the power, to transform the world around you. And if we collectively use our transformative space to make a difference, to be inclusive, to think about diversity, to reach out to those who are least like us and make connections, think about how we can change the world. Now I want you to think about all the things that happen within this space. All the people that you interact with, all the things that you say, all of the things that you do every single day within this space and the impact that you can have. How will you use your transformational space? The interactions you have, the words you use, the things that you do as you're interacting with different people. You can be an agent of change, harnessing the power of your transformational space to make a positive difference in this world. You're already doing it, but do you recognize it? Do you own it? And do you take advantage of it every single day? I ask you to take the next 24 hours and think about everything that happens within one arm's length. The people, the environment, the interactions, all of it. And think about how you can make a positive impact within this space. What positive impact are you going to take with your transformative space? Thank you.